Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Okami Din. In the last episode, we took down the Witch Queen on her own turf, the Demon Market. And Cooney was unfortunately taken by the giant catfish we kept hearing about. And I loved you guys on that cliffhanger for a whole week. I'm sorry, but let's just jump right back into it because I am glad to be back. So starting off, I do want to show something that I actually forgot to show a couple videos ago. Not anything missable, so don't worry, I didn't forget anything important. We go up by this sign here that takes us to Madame Fawn's shack and head up here, there's actually a collectible for us. And, man, I, I just love that effect of, like, how her hair is water and it splashes all over and how it's transparent. It just, it looks so cool, and it's really cool they pull it off on the DS. But, um, that'll say Shinshu Field this way, but it's blocked off now, like we saw before. Can't move those rocks, so... I guess it's kind of a reference to Okami. All we do is, we gotta draw a circle around this mini cursed zone, and that's gonna spawn... A chest for us! It's gonna contain something kind of vital to completing this area. Get some praise for that, I don't think it's gonna give us a level, but... Which contains... The line to that fishing mo Fishing montage? Fishing manifest! So, we can't get the others yet, but I wanted to at least show that. Now, we have a battle right here, actually. I wanted to show this. Nanami? You can see that her special attack differs from Kuni's. She has this ray of light around her that damages everything it touches. I'll be honest, her special attack beats the crap out of Kuni's. She has arguably the best special attack in the entire game. I love her special attack just so, so much. So overpowered, so much fun to just spam it because she just goes all over the place and she hurts anything she touches, and it does a lot of damage, too. So... Take care of these bone clams, get the money, and... Now this is a partner I can get behind letting help. So back over by that pagoda is where we have to go next. Because the other pieces of the fishing equipment are not open to us yet. In fact, we won't be able to complete it for quite a while, which is kind of funny. But, hey, there's a cur there's a curved bead. I think I called it a cursed bead the first time I said that. No, it's curved bead. Ugh. So I'll go ahead and get it for you. Press the X button to let me off, and I'll go get it for you. So we let her off. Now, Nanami is unable to move around on land too effectively. However, she can swim in water. As you can see here, she will jump in automatically, and she's able to swim over to things that we cannot get to. Later on, she actually does go underwater as well, which is kind of cool, but for the time being, she's only going to be on the surface. So I really do like the fact that even though you can't swim, it's kind of nice that you can swim with another character, I suppose. So, we have the bead now. And, if you remember, we saw a door that needed it on the front of the pagoda. So, let's go over to the pagoda and do that. Guess that wasn't too bad because I got those two units of health that I needed recovered during that battle, so... I guess at the very least, I no longer have those two missing units of health bothering me at the bottom of the screen, and I don't have to use my items to get rid of them. So we'll go ahead and insert that into the 69 door. Okay, I'm sorry, but as serious as I am with, you know, pointing out, like, references to things in Japan, because that is, like, a big part of the series, I'm just gonna probably end up calling it the 69 door just because I'm dumb like that. That's one thing that I can't resist. Come on. So, we are now in the five-story pagoda. Now here in the five-story pagoda, there's some statue over there, but I say we jump into the spikes! That's more fun! The spikes are in the way. Yeah, I didn't notice. Oh well. So there's nothing else for us to do in this room, so we might as well check the stinky statue. I am amazed that it counted that, because its head was like all squished and it was like it had some kind of concussion or birth defect or something like that. I did a terrible job drawing its head.
How none of that water spilled out, I will never know. Oh, child of the great sun, I am the young Nuregami. Your voice has called me forth to bring rain after the dry season. What do you mean, dry season? It's flooded here! The sweet rain moistens the heart. For you, water will flow freely. And give succor to the parched earth. As it drenches and soothes the land. I like how the child has more freedom than the parent because the parent's stuck in that glass ball forever no matter how hard it tried to push the cork out in the first one. But in this one, this one could poke its head out of that jar anytime it wants. Yurigami's a retainer of Amaterasu with the power of water spout. You can bring forth water from anything that has moisture. Go ahead and try it. Okay. So, what we gotta do is, we need to... Draw a line from the water. Your ink will turn blue, showing that you have done it. And of course, again, the ends of it will glow, showing that it's interacting with an object. And there you go. Looks really cool, doesn't it? Now, one thing that I really like doing is... Uh, is what I'll do here in just a moment. Here we have the water spout scroll. It'll just say, you know, draw a line from water. Draw a line from the source to the target to fill or douse it. Place the tip of your brush and then turn the whole holy smoke blue, okay. The ink line walls turn blue, so you can move water along easily. The line in Holy Smoke's color will change as you draw, so again, it will change color as you're going along. So, yeah. We will finish that, but what I like to do with this is, what's kind of funny about this is, you can kind of just make the water go like nuts all over the place, and by being really blunt, I'm about to make my DS divide by zero. Okay, fine, ruin my fun. Okay, hang on. There we go! <laughs> Sometimes that can really, really screw up the frame rate, admittedly. So, <laughs> that was kind of funny. I'm like, I'm gonna do this! And then it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh well, anyway. Even a demon like me's gotta make a living. I'd sell my arm to even a fishy human like you if you had a coin on you. Can I interest you in my wares? <laughs> like, used car salesman. So here we have a holy arrow. We haven't seen one of those yet, so I think I'll buy one now that I have a lot more money. Soul Sake, Fist Sake, we've already gone over those. Divine Sake, we've already gone over that. Holy Bone S, I sure hope you know what that does by this point. Spirit Ink S, I sure hope you know what that does by this point. Exorcism, I already showed. Exorcism F, I haven't shown. So, uh, yeah, we'll actually pick up some of these, just so I can show them. Um, I understand, of course, that you can find these items around, but I just kind of want to show them. So, we will save really quick. And, I want to take care of these. Don't know why, because I actually didn't need anything. And right here we have a new enemy, the White Toad. I am not 100% sure if these are actually missable. I'm trying to remember if they are. Actually it is, the White Toad is a missable creature. I went and looked, so you are gonna want to fight at least one of those. Not like it takes a whole lot of time for you to do, but just saying that you really, really want to take care of that, because if you somehow miss a creature like that, that's kind of a crappy thing to miss getting 100% on because you pretty much just have to attack them once to get rid of them. So we'll pull you up. And we have a required battle. Now if I recall, we're actually going to get a tutorial here of using water in battle, which is kind of nice. Indeed we do! So we have this guy here. And if you recall... We did not have his floral finisher before. However, now that we have the ability to use water, if there's going to be water spawning. Now, really quick, I do want to say something. I am aware that Nanami's hair is water, but at least for the time being, you can't use it, okay? So before the comments explode to be saying like, oh my god, like just use Nanami, uh, you, you actually can't. So let's just keep attacking you. And let's bop you with a back of the head. Come on. It's kind of odd how, like, they give us a required battle, but we can't actually use water. Can I stop getting my butt burned? I mean, look at how much my butt is on fire. Okay. Do that. Do that. Do that. Thank you and good night. Give me lots of health, please. So, if you haven't guessed by now, his floral finisher is water, but we didn't have any way to do it there. And wow, I think that's the first time that I did badly on all three of them. Okay. 
So we have two torches there. Let's be all fancy and make it divide by zero. I'm just going to call it dividing by zero. Woo! Ha-ha! <laughs> Frame rate drop city! I don't know. But I couldn't think of anything else to say, so I don't know. Let's kill you because I want to make sure that I get you in the beast here. Let me actually make sure that I have. I think this is going to be the last thing that we check here just because we're running up on about 11 minutes and I can't really think of a better time to stop it than getting here and trying out our new power. So yeah, we got ourselves a new power. And next time on Okami Den, we're going to be using that power to explore more of the five-story pagoda. See you guys then.